Hello, welcome to episode three of Stats with Mats. And this is the first episode that is being filmed in Dr. Schoen's panic room. I'm going to be coming to you uh, very frequently from Dr. Schoen's panic room. Um, the goal of today is to create a bit of a shorter video that's going to bump everybody's understanding of the formula up a bit now that you've had a chance to practice it without the guidance of my videos and you've all handed in that first homework. So thank you very much for your willingness to adjust to this and for getting that work done. Um, here Here's what I want to do today. Um, I have created a scanned copy of my work and how I worked through this formula. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, work through this step by step. I encourage you to keep your homework in front of you and uh, follow along with me. So let's get started. So demographers believe that sex is something that affects the age at which one begins their first marriage. All right, so interested in this idea, we are sampling 50 adult men and 50 adult women, all of whom are currently married. And we ask a very simple question, at what age did you first get married? We find a sample mean for men of 29 years old, and we find a standard deviation associated with that sample of 4.5 years. Um, for women, however, we find a sample mean of 27 and a standard deviation there that's slightly more narrow of 3.3 um, years. So, here I have two independent samples, which means I'm operating with two hypothetical populations, even though I don't see uh, population information listed in there um, anywhere. So that tells me I am going to need to do a two means t-test. Now as for the direction of this, you are asked with 95% confidence, is there a difference in age at first marriage between men and women in the United States? So that right there should have told you that yes, this is going to be a two-tailed test. So let me repeat that, a two means two-tailed t-test. And the final thing I need to isolate in order to know what problem I gotta use and what, what formula I need to use going forward, what are my sample sizes? Okay, 50 adult men and 50 adult women. These ends are equivalent. So that part is easy enough. Therefore, if I scroll up, you can see I've written right up here at the top, a two means t-test, two tailed with equal ends. I'll just move my face so you can see that. With equal ends. Wonderful. Okay, so working through this formula, step one, what do we know? X bar one is 29. S1 is 4.5 and N1 is 50. X bar two, I'm gonna classify women as the second sample, just because that's how the problem was written. 27 years, X bar uh, two is 27, S2 is 3.3 and N2 is 50. Okay, knowing what I know there, and knowing that this is a two-tailed test, that gave me a lot of freedom. I was able to arrange X bar one and X bar two any way I wanted, because if it's a two-tailed test, the order doesn't matter. And my critical T is always gonna be either the positive or the negative version of that number that you see on the T distribution, okay? So knowing that I arranged this uh, 29 and 27, X bar one and X bar two respectively, um, but the order, if you did this 27 and 29, you would have gotten the exact same answer here, except your vert values will be negative once we get to the T formula. Um, and, and that's really it. That's the, going to be the only difference here. You should not see different numbers, just different uh, positives or negatives, depending on how uh, you organize this. So step two, null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis. My null hypothesis, I'm going to uh, speculate that mu one, that is the age at first marriage in the population for males, is equal to mu two the uh, average age at um, first marriage for females within the population. Okay, so you can see that reading the problem over again, I'm asked, is there a difference in first marriage between men and women? Now that difference could be greater than, that difference could be less than, but if I find that X bar one really does equal X bar two, and I find that mu one equals mu two, then there is no difference. So that's going to be age zero or my null hypothesis. Now, conversely, the alternate hypothesis will be the opposite of the null. 
So I've written H1 equals mu of one does not equal mu of two. Mu one does not equal mu two. So therefore, if that's found to be supported, then there is a legitimate statistically significant difference between the age of first marriage for males in the population and the age of first marriage for females within the population. Now, moving on to steps two and three, or three and four here, pardon me, steps three and steps four, you were told to do this at 95% confidence. So therefore, one minus 95% is going to give me 5%, a 5% chance of making an error. 0 0.05 will therefore be my alpha once I convert the percentage to a decimal here. And the degrees of freedom formula, you will remember, N1 minus 1 plus N2 minus 1. So since N for both samples is 50, I do 50 minus 1 plus 50 minus 1. That gives me a degrees of freedom of 98. I guess I'm looking at this now and I made a mistake. I forgot to write that down. So listen very carefully. Degrees of freedom equals 98. Then I went directly to my stats packet. I looked up in the T distribution. 0 0.05 alpha on a two-tailed test, and I went to find the critical T that's most associated um, with, uh, uh, the, the, uh, I, I rounded down, right? From 98, I rounded downward to the closest uh, critical T on the table. And it appears that that number is plus or minus 2.00. That's the critical value, plus or minus, because it's a two-tailed test. So if I find a T, t, a t uh, statistic when I actually calculate this, if I find that that value is greater than positive 2 or less than negative 2, then I will be able to reject the null hypothesis. If it is in between the values of negative 2 and positive 2, in between those two values, I will fail to reject the null hypothesis. All right? So now let's get to work. The T formula is X bar 1 minus X bar 2 divided by S of X bar 1 minus X bar 2, where S of X bar 1 minus X bar 2 is equal to the square root of S squared 1 over N1 plus S squared 2 over N2. And so that's what you're seeing me put into this formula. 20.25, that is 4.5 squared. That is my first standard deviation squared to make it the variance. Divide that by 50 and add that to 10.89, which is the outcome of 3.3 squared divided by 50. So I add those two together. I take the square root, and you should have gotten a value S of X bar 1 minus X bar 2 for, of 0 0.7892. If you were just a little bit slightly off, that's not likely to be a problem. But always make sure you are rounding to at least two decimal places. At least. Otherwise, points will be taken off. So then that gets plopped right in the denominator of the T formula. 29, 20, uh, 29 minus 27 divided by 0 0.7892 reduces to 2 divided by 0 0.7892, and that reduces to 2.534. I will circle that because that is my observed T. And then you will see down here at the very bottom of the page, 2.534 is greater than two, than positive two. Therefore, that triggers a rejection of the null hypothesis. So reject H0 with 95% confidence. So what's my interpretation here? Well, going back to the language of the formula, with 95% confidence, I reject the null hypothesis, and I conclude that there is a significant difference between age at first marriage for males and females in the population. So I hope working through this on your own uh, after seeing my videos and my lectures is something that uh, has built some confidence here. I'll be reaching out uh, at a later point to kind of gauge where you stand, but also looking at the homeworks and the mistakes that you did make or did not make um, will also certainly tell the tale on that. Um, Feel free to watch this over again if you uh, need, you know, uh, additional insight as to where uh, these numbers came from. Now, as for question number two. 
Sociological research demonstrates that men tend to earn higher incomes than women. Uh, and that's true in many countries. To better understand these gendered earnings, I have taken a sample of 100 men and I have taken a sample of 125 women. Starting salaries I found are as follows. $28,200 for men with a standard deviation of $1,200. And then for women, for my second sample, $24,100 for women and $1,500 on the standard deviation. So once again, I know I'm doing a t-test because I have been given no population information here. And because I have been given no predetermined value, I've only been given these two specifically designated sample means. Therefore, I'm doing a two means, one tailed t-test with unequal ends. Why unequal ends? Very simple, 100 males and 125 females. And why am I doing a one tailed test? Right here. Can you conclude with 95% confidence that men do indeed make more? I am realizing I made a mistake here. Can you conclude with 95% confidence that men do indeed make more money than women? Um, I apologize. Uh, I will update that uh, in time for you guys to actually do the homework. Um, but yeah, do men make more money um, than women. All right. So, uh, sorry, we, we are all learning here. Um, so step one, state what I know. I'm going to make X bar one males, 28,200. Now you can organize this how you like, but the easiest way to make sure you're not making a mistake is because I'm asked whether males make more money than females, because that's what I'm specifically being asked. Um, I'm going to make the larger sample mean 28,200 X bar one. So that makes S1 $1,200 and N1 100 people. Let me just double check and make sure that's right. Yep, that is very right. And then X bar two, I'm going to make $24,100 uh, $24, with a standard deviation of $1,500. And that was drawn from a sample of 125. So I have organized this in such a way that I am not going to uh, uh, be looking for a negative critical T because I made the larger, because I was asked for one sample mean being greater than the other sample mean, I made the larger one X1. And that implies, as I said in my presentation, that um, uh, the critical value of T here will be positive. So I must calculate a critical T that is greater I must calculate a sample T that is greater than the critical T in order to reject the null hypothesis. So moving on to step two, H zero mu of one is less than or equal to mu of two. Now remember very carefully what groups we've assigned to what. I have designated males as group one and females as group two. As a result, uh, mu one, if that was less than mu two, if males made less money than females or an equivalent amount of money to females, then that right there would tell me that, yeah, okay, I did not find support for my alternative hypothesis, which H one is mu of one is greater than mu of two, which corresponds obviously to the creation of our critical T where we are looking for that specifically positive value. So I'm going to do this at 95% confidence. Therefore, my alpha level is 0 0.05. I now um, do my degrees of freedom as 100 minus 1 plus 125 minus 1. That's DF1. Uh, DF, uh, that's um, DF equals N1 minus 1 plus N2 minus 1. Um, and uh, 100 minus 1 is 99, 125 minus 1 is 124, add those two things together, and I have a degrees of freedom of 223. Looking that up on the table, that clearly puts me in the infinity section of the T distribution. I'm doing a one-tailed test, and I am doing this with 0.05 alpha, or 95% confidence. You should have gotten a critical T here of positive 1.645. And that is all we need to get to work. So you will remember that we have a three-step process here. We calculate S squared P, and that then becomes the numerator in the S of X bar one minus X bar two formula. And once I calculate that, that becomes the denominator in my T formula. So we start with S squared P. That is 
n1 minus 1, here that's 99, times s1 squared. So I have to square 1,200. The challenge here is that the numbers are getting very, very high, and uh, they're getting large, and they're getting very unwieldy. But you personally don't got to do anything different than just follow the order of operations and follow the math. So squaring that, then uh, so square the standard deviation to make it variance, and then multiply that by 99. And that will be added to 124, or n2 minus 1, times the second standard deviation squared. So I square 1,500, and this is going to give me 142,560,000 uh, plus 279 million. Uh, yeah, exactly, 279 million. Whoa, dude. Uh, these are very, very large numbers, but when I add those together... And divide by 223, n1 minus 1 plus n2 minus 1, I get an S squared P of 1,890,403.59. Now, that's a crazy large number, but the statistics are very, like, it's because we have, uh, if our standard deviation is 1,200, you imagine what that turns into when we square it? It gets crazy. Um, so even though this looks weird, that was kind of the challenge here, of being able to work with large numbers and to do it effectively. So S squared P is 1,890,403.59. I then put that in part two here and calculate S of X bar one minus X bar two. So that number of S squared P becomes the numerator in both parts of this square root equation. So 1, uh, 1,890,403.59 divided by 100, and then I add that to S squared P divided by 125. That reduces to the square root of 18,904.04 plus 15,123.23. Add those two things together, take the square root uh, to finish it out, and S of X bar 1 minus X bar 2 should equal 184.46. One final step decide or calculate and then decide and conclude. So X bar one minus X bar two is 28,200 minus 24,100. I will divide that by 184.46 and this equals 22.23. Now remember, this has to be compared to our critical T. It's very large, which means that, yeah, with this sample, we likely are picking up a very real and very significant difference between males and female, male and female earning power within the population. Um, this is the gender gap at work here. Um, so is 22.23 greater than positive 1.645? Absolutely. Therefore, I reject the null hypothesis with 95% confidence, and I conclude that male starting salaries are significantly greater than female starting salaries. Did we get these answers? I hope so. Was this helpful? I really hope so. Now, if you would like additional practice on the t-test, I would be happy to provide that for you, so let me know. But for now, uh, assuming we have a decent handle on the t-test, I'll be grading your homeworks, I'll be providing some feedback for you, and uh, most importantly, we are going to be moving on. And uh, not to freak anybody out, but uh, next week we do ANOVA, which stands for Analysis of Variance, uh, which is the F distribution, and as I joked in class, F does not stand for fun. It actually stands for a different word that starts with the letter F. Um, ANOVA is usually, by orders of magnitude, the hardest formula that we do. So please be ready next week to pay attention to those videos as much as you can. Be ready for after Monday's lecture to not really understand this. Be ready to kind of understand it after Wednesday and be ready to feel comfortable with it on Friday. It's a week-long process, but I'll go over it as many times as I need to. Um, for now, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm signing out from Dr. Schoen's panic room and I will talk to you next week. Thank you very much and uh, be safe out there.